You're welcome to this class, and today I want to tell you the most repeated topics on JAM, UTME for Physics. All right, these um, statistics are taken from different years of the previous exams on UTME. So there are basic topics you need to go with. Number one is motion. You see, motion is a basic in physics. Um, those motion has to do with um, um, those equations of motion, linear motion. We have uh, motion under gravity. We also have projectile. You have VT graph, velocity time graph. So this one is number one. So you are going to be very well acquainted with this topic. Number two, I'm going to be talking about work energy and power. So work is very important. Where you said that work is force times um, distance. You talk about the energy is also work in physics based on the fact that they have the same units of measurement. And we also talk about the power, which is work per time. This is very important. Inside that same work energy and power, we talk about the kinetic energy. We talk about the potential energy and the law of conservation of mechanical energy is very important. And its application is very massive in questions and how to do it in JAMP. So number three, we have to talk about um, elastic properties of matter, which has to do with Hooke's law, you know, um, where we talk about your modulus of elasticity, you talk about stress and strain, you talk about um, work done by a spring, you talk about the potential, uh, elast elastic potential energy of a spring, which is half fx squared. So these are very important for number three. In number four, we talk about momentum. Momentum, where we, talk, where we say that um, impulse is force times time, and also which is equal to change in momentum, which is m bracket v minus u, which came from the second law of motion. So that simply means I've listed motion whereby we say that in UTME, you must be acquainted with the three laws of Sir Isaac Newton's motion. Very important. Then we go into mom moment of forces or couple, where we say that the force times the perpendicular distance from the turning point to the line of action, and also talk about equilibrium of forces. Or we talk about them, you know, conditions for a body to be in equilibrium, whereby you also talk about triangle, lot of forces, and other things. Then, I think number six has to do with vectors and resolution of vectors. You know, when we talk about resolution of vectors, when you have um, a vector, a body, this is a body, this is a force, maybe F1 moving in this direction, another one, F2 moving in this direction, you are asked to find the resultant vector. So that means as the force is, the two forces are acting on this body, what will be the effect and which direction will it move? That is where we talk about resolution of vectors. And in resolution of vectors, we talk about how do you resolve two vectors, how do you resolve three vectors, how to resolve three vectors is mainly a principle according to triangle law of forces. Yes, but when, how to resolve two vectors has to do with maybe if they are inclined at an angle, anything more than zero degree, less than um, 90 degree. We use, uh, I think, parallelogram law of vectors. Parallelogram law of vector can also go with angle 90 degree, can go with 180 degree, can go with anything, just depend on how good you are in using it. But more, mainly, when it is two forces, we use Pythagoras theory to find the resultant vector. But anything that has to do with resolution of vectors, even when it is more than three, four, you need to be very good in vector resolution. And in a very short while, we'll be going to be taking you on the questions that have been repeated in the, uh, I mean, the questions. We are going to solve the questions proper. In number seven, we talk about machines, where we say mechanical advantage and velocity ratio. We talk about efficiency of a machine and everything that has to do with machine. Number eight, we talk about heat energy. In this heat energy, we talk about specific heat capacity. We talk about heat capacity. We talk about specific latent heat. We talk about latent heat. We talk about latent heat of vaporization, latent heat of fusion. And, okay, we also talk about black body radiation. It's very important because it's jump a little advanced. We talk about black body radiation. Even in wire, they bring black body radiation. We have to talk about Bo um, Boseman's constant. And we also talk about 
um, this one, which we call um, conductivity of a body, where we say that the power, which is Q, um, QT is equal to Ka change in theta all over L. This is conductivity of a body. It's very important. So all of them, I categorize them under heat energy. Very important. We also talk about this linear expansivity um, or is expansion, linear expansivity, area expansivity, and cubic expansivity. They are also under expansivity for this number eight. When it goes to number nine, I want to talk about density and relative density. This is where we talk about up trust. We talk about um, yes, relative density of a body. Very important. And in a short while, we are going to be doing those calculations. Then we talk about capacitors, capacitor in electricity, you know, how to use um, soft questions on capacitor, capacitor arrangement in a circuit. Then after that, we go into optics. And these optics, I will be bringing you, um, the questions will be coming mainly on lenses, refraction, and reflection of light. And when it comes to these lenses, you have to be very good in using RIP, which is real is positive or you use the other one called, um, I mean, these are conventions used for solving questions on lenses or lens formulas in physics under refraction. We use the new Cartesian. Now, we also talk about um, Sir Isaac Newton's experiment, which is called dispersion of white light where we talk about the spectrum of light and their behavior, electromagnetic spectrum, how light behaves when they pass from one medium to another medium under refraction. We also talk about the, the critical angle, total internal reflection. We talk about the rectangular block prism and triangular block prism. They are all under these optics. Then you go into reflection, you talk about the number of images that will be formed when two mirrors are inclined at an angle, very important. Number 12, I talk about wave, general wave equation and properties, whereby we say that the general wave equation is driven from the sinusoidal function, which is this. So this is the general wave equation. It's very important. Jam does not joke with these questions. And talk about other properties of wave. Good. In number 13, I will go straight into current electricity and probably electric field. In that current electricity, where we talk about Ohm's law, we talk about Ohm's law, we also talk about this formula, electromotive force equal to the PD plus the loss voltage, very important as well. Um, you talk about arrangement of resistors, and then you also go into that on shunt, multiplier, uh -huh. you talk about conductivity, conduct, conductivity, yes. This conductivity is under electricity, where we say that this conductivity, given that this function is equal to one all over resistivity. You also talk about resistivity, talk about potentiometer, talk about wisdom bridge, you talk about uh, meter bridge as well. They are all under electricity, and you need to be very well acquainted, very good on them. In number 14, we talk about simple AC circuit. In simple AC circuit, you need to know what is, um, you know, you know that the voltage across a capacitor is equal to the current flowing through the capacitor because it is a series circuit. So the same current is going to flow, mainly a series circuit, not I have not really seen questions on AC circuit, on parallel circuit. It's mainly simple circuit. Uh, I mean, series circuit. In that case, we said that the voltage across the capacitor, which is RMS across the capacitor, is equal to the current multiplied by the um, capacitive reactance. Then we also talk about the inductive reactance, this whereby the capacitive reactance is given as 1 all over 2 pi Fc, or the inductive reactance, which is equal to 2 pi Fl. You, know? mm, you also talk about the impedance, and so on and so forth, in that number 14. 
In number 15, I'm going to go into mainly nuclear physics, where we talk about radioactivity, we talk about um, um, energy levels, or we talk about Albert Einstein's equation. Albert, Albert Einstein's equation, who says that the energy of the photon is equal to the work function, that is the minimum work required to eject an electron from the surface of a metal when light of a specific frequency falls on it, plus the kinetic energy of the electron while they are moving. Why do we need the kinetic energy? Because when the appropriate energy of a given frequency on the surface of a metal, a given electron will be ejected, will be moving out. For them to move out, they need a specific quantity of kinetic energy. And that is what Albert Einstein stated. This is Albert Einstein equation. Or you also talk about, all right, um, Heisenberg uncertainty principle or wave particle paradox, whereby we say um, this man's De Broglie, De Broglie, De Broglie, people like to call it De Broglie, but that is De Broglie, it's a pronunciation of a name, whereby we say that the wavelength is equal to 1 H all over P, where P is the momentum of the electron trying to talk about the dual nature of light. All right. Then we talk about radioactivity. And the last one I want, I want you to know and be well acquainted is semiconductors. Semiconductors and electronics. We talk about rectifier circuit or transistor. We talk about um, you know, extrinsic semiconductors and intrinsic semiconductors. If you study these things very well, and especially use our exam guide app, you'll be well acquainted with the questions that come out and you master how Jan construct a question. And with that, our students have given testimonies of how good they perform on the last year's jump. I wish you luck and while you come back. Thank you very much.